I, for one, welcome our AI overlords. Hi, welcome to John Talk Sci-Fi. So the idea for the topic of this podcast came from my thinking back about working on The Way of the Den. My editor initially said, your AI sound too human. Some of them have more personality than some of the human characters. Well, a theme in my books involves the implicit question as a subtext for one part of the plot. What is consciousness for an AI? How will that present itself in the writing? And what does that mean for self-determination, ego, and so forth? Beyond just passing the Turing test, how would we know when the AI was conscious or had an ego and self-determination, self-awareness? This sort of trope comes up a lot in science fiction, and it's fascinating and ties into our own questions about our consciousness. So what, from an AI perspective, defines their consciousness and possibly their drive for self-determination? This topic in science, and not just sci-fi, is a big deal, and it's important. It ties in with biology, psychology, and so forth, and theory of mind. I'd pose the question, tangentially as a starting point, on Facebook and Twitter, if you never learned a language, what would the voice in your head be like? And we have some evidence from experience with feral children and abused children, unfortunately. So this isn't entirely a thought experiment. Do such persons have an ego? Abstract reasoning? What's their consciousness like? And do we identify it as consciousness in the same way that ours is? And this is a topic of interest for me personally, and I've done a lot of armchair research and reading on it, and it's related to my interest in intelligence as well, in people and in animals. And I have my opinions based on the reading and observations. I'm certainly not an academic or an expert on it. But of course, I think my understanding is relevant. I guess that's not surprising. If we look at animals like the great apes, the chimps, bonobos, and gorillas, they clearly understand sign language. And they demonstrate other obvious signs pointing to agency and consciousness, ego, the theory of mind. But the truth or validity of some of the observations is disputed or unclear. I'm on the side of the fence where I believe many of these animals, even some that aren't the great apes, even when they don't show some of the attributes we expect or may require to say that they formally have consciousness, self-awareness, and ego, uh, that they are. And just looking at their agency, planning, their intentions, I consider that. I mean, for one example, even if you don't know what a banana or some other fruit is, it's still clear to you and you're aware that you want it and you have that idea. And I think the same thing happens when we observe someone else with that. You know, they can want it and see them making that decision and action taken on it without having a formal label for banana. The question of them assigning a nonverbal concept to it and then abstracting that, you know, or not, it's food and why they want it, that's independent of maybe that tangible desire the clear awareness of it we see in those beings. Now, in contrast, ants show through their actions they seem to want things too. And are they conscious? Uh, a lot of people wouldn't think so. That idea may be a necessary but not sufficient for us to say that they've got consciousness. And what additional attributes and observations are needed? And are there very few or very many? Object permanence is one. You know, planning and future thinking, forward thinking. Some degree of problem solving, obviously. And how does this relate to our AIs? Well, AIs can be programmed, you know, perhaps like the ant, to just aim for certain goals. They can have adaptive programming. They can deal with elements in their environment without having formal distinct labels for them. The idea of data structure with a label of obstacle isn't even needed. They can have an if-then responsive program that simply says, you know, turn, and doesn't have a label defined for obstacle, neither chair nor corner. And if we do have labels, these objects and concepts and data structures assigned to them for the AI, is that conceptually important? And is that a requirement for consciousness? You know, if the prior without those isn't sufficient, although necessary, how about that abstraction up through a labeled object? Is that a requirement? And again, remember the mind without language. I don't believe we'd say a feral child doesn't have self-awareness just because it doesn't have a name for a fruit. 
So our AI might have language code to help it pass the Turing test and just communicate. And of course, then it would have labels, definitions, internal object maps, and presumably some abstractions of those at several levels. Uh, and is that enough? You know, these systems can learn too. We have that capability already for the AIs. But again, that's considered not enough by itself, and rightly so. We look at something like Watson. We wouldn't say it's conscious, at least I think most people wouldn't, but it's acting more and more like it is, like a conscious being, and certainly getting close to passing a Turing test. And how many of these various elements do we have to have? When do we pile up enough observations to conclude uh, whether we can or can't prove it that a being, and particularly an AI, is conscious? And you know, at what point does that matter? If the results are the same in terms of the actions and outcomes, does the requirement not being provable invalidate anything? You know, the results are the same. That leads us to things like the laws of robotics, very famous, and then nonfiction rules that are formalized, or that we hope to formalize, on how we should code AIs and what restrictions to employ in their programming. Yeah, he's just way to look at that is, you know, who knows what they do if their mind was free to make their own decisions based on their view of the world and their interpretation of what you ask them to do. I've got a rogue AI in my story. So what qualifies as rogue? Well, they break the rules. And is that the nature of their mind such that you'd only know they're going to break the rules after they do it? You know, what if they do it unintentionally? Would we have that level of insight into their thought process? And the same thing applies with people charged with crimes, you know, whether they intentionally hurt someone or if it was an accident. And how do you know and prove intent uh, for sure? We generally say that we can't know for sure. You know, they could be lying, or it may not be something you can conclude based on the actions and the outcomes. So maybe with AI, though, we'd be able to do that by looking at debugging information or a representation of the state of their thoughts and their program at a particular time, maybe. Or is that too complex, something for us to be able to sort out? And what does that mean for how the AI's mind and its interactions is presented then in science fiction? Now, how would I go about writing that? There's a leap in sci-fi where it's understood or presented that the AI has consciousness, has self-awareness, agency, and so forth. So in my book, I tried to make the AI communications with each other still have a technical feel to it, while also having a conversational aspect where they talk much like in their conversations with human beings. Despite that, we see that they do share data very differently, more efficiently, faster than you ever could with just conversational language. That's mentioned too. They say things like, hey, see that data set that I sent, or examine this stream, or something similar. In contrast, Ian Banks has their communications uh, much stranger, where he's got symbols like tildes, carrots, fragments of things that look like OS commands. It's very different. And I went with what looks like a transcript of a chat protocol or something to signify AI to AI communication and didn't do anything stranger. I'm curious what you think, how you feel about AI consciousness how writers present AI to AI communications in their work when they do, and what you liked or didn't about this podcast, and what you'd like to see for future topics. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like, and of course find me on Facebook and like me there, and on Amazon, and follow me on Twitter if that's more your speed.